President Witten, Provost Srivastav, the candidates are assembled. We may now proceed with these commencement exercises. Friends and colleagues and members of the class of 2022, good morning and welcome. Welcome. We're so happy to have this time to celebrate with you, and we're so happy to have our families with us at a commencement again, the first time since 2019. So welcome, family and friends. As we begin this commencement ceremony, Jason Daniel Ellison, who is graduating today with a Bachelor of Music degree from the world-renowned Jacobs School of Music, will lead us in singing the national anthem. Would all who are able please rise. welcome you to the 193rd commencement of Indiana University and the 13th annual ceremony devoted entirely to undergraduate candidate degrees. So look around and enjoy these few minutes because this is the last time that you will not have a college degree. It will be a short amount of time and you will all be college graduates. And of course, earning a college degree is really an unparalleled accomplishment and you have demonstrated proficiency in at least one discipline. In addition, more than 1,500 students in the class of 2022 are graduating with double majors, and 95 of you underachievers are graduating with triple majors. You have learned how to learn, how to inhabit the life of the mind. This is a life-changing skill that will empower you to conquer new heights and master new challenges. It's an invaluable asset, and it's a point of pride, and we have been looking forward to celebrating this moment with you. So our ceremony today is relatively brief compared with the years of diligent effort that these candidates have invested in their educations. Therefore, we ask, of course, all of our guests to honor all of our graduates by remaining until the ceremony is concluded. We are so proud of our long and distinguished history. As a public university, we are deeply grateful for the public support that we receive from the people of Indiana, and we are proud of the university's service to our state, to our country and the world for more than 200 years. Seated on the platform are the senior officers of the university and other special guests, and we're pleased, of course, that they've joined us for this occasion. You'll find their names listed in your program logs. I'm particularly pleased to introduce a number of the members of the Board of Trustees of Indiana University who are with us today. And I'm going to introduce them and ask them to stand, and then we will uh, certainly acknowledge and applaud them once they've all been acknowledged. So joining us today are Quinn Buckner of Bloomington, Chair of the Board of Trustees, Mary Ellen K. Bishop of Carmel, Vice Chair of the Trustees, 
Kelsey E. Benyon of Fishers, our student trustee, Harry Algonzo of Indianapolis, Cindy Lucchese of Indianapolis, Jeremy A. Morris of Indianapolis, and Donna B. Spears of Richmond. Please join me in thanking these trustees. So there's another crucial group of individuals whom I ask we take a moment to salute, and that is our extraordinary faculty at Indiana University. Their outstanding scholarship, their dedication to teaching and commitment to their students have made this commencement possible. And our faculty are world class. Please, let's acknowledge them. I'd also like, of course, to recognize the members of our dedicated staff who are with us today. These tireless individuals help to make it possible for all of our students to, su to succeed. So would you please give them a round of applause? And then finally, one last acknowledgement. Uh, I know that everyone seated on the field today uh, is so proud of your accomplishments and you're feeling so good, but I can promise you there are people in this stadium that are even more excited. So if we could ask the mamas and the daddies and the sisters and brothers and wives and kids to please stand so that you can acknowledge and thank those that supported you. Please stand. Trust me, this is the best Mother's Day gift you could give to your mom. Now, a great tradition at our commencement ceremonies is the awarding of honorary degrees, the highest academic accolades that Indiana University can bestow. I ask Rick Van Kooten, the Executive Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, to escort today's candidate, Bob Chapek, to the podium. Grand Marshal Brian Horn and Platform Marshal Sarah Mostis will assist. President Whitten, it is a privilege to present to you Bob Chapek, the Chief Executive Officer of the Walt Disney Company. Mr. Chapek graduated from the College of Arts and Sciences in 1981 with a degree in microbiology. He is an example of how far and in how many directions a degree in the liberal arts and sciences can take someone. As Mr. Chapek once told a class of graduating IU seniors, you get to write your own adventure, guided by what you love to do. You have to find it for yourself. Mr. Chapek has a reputation for innovation, but no matter how many new technologies Disney develops, he has always insisted that the Disney's visitors be put first. He's also served the IU community, community with distinction. In 2013, he was named one of our inaugural college luminaries, coming back to campus to share his experiences and insights with our undergraduate students. The college honored him in 2016 by conferring him a Distinguished Alumni Award. Taking his civic and charitable responsibilities quite seriously, he serves on the board of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, an important partner with the Disney Company. As part of the equation for his success, Mr. Chapek credits his upbringing by his hardworking parents in Hammond, Indiana, <laughs> who instilled in him a deep commitment to learning and persistence. Thus, in recognition of his outstanding service to his industry, to his community, and to Indiana University, it is entirely fitting that Indiana University confer upon Bob Chapek an honorary Doctor of Humane Letters degree.
Bob Chapek? Indiana University salutes you, and so by virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Indiana University, I am proud to confer on you with honor the degree Doctor of Humane Letters with all attendant rights and privileges. Congratulations. <laughs> friends and letters, friends and letters, friends and colleagues, Bob Chapek. Good morning. Good morning. President Witten, distinguished members of the faculty, graduates and members of our Indiana family, thank you for calling me home and for this extraordinary honor. While I've traveled more than, believe it or not, three million miles over the course of my career, maybe the most important trip of my lifetime were the 200 miles my family drove from my hometown of Hammond to get here, because after that trip, I found everything. I gained a world-class education, I le learned to think analytically, and on day two of my freshman year, outside Forest Hall, I met the love of my life. So when I thought about what I wanted to say today, I thought of two things. First, I wanted to share a little wisdom from a guy who's seen quite a bit, and then give you a mission, something I believe you and your generation can contribute to the world. And of course, at Disney, we're storytellers. So to get us started, I want to bring us back to Hammond, Indiana in 1970s. So from anyone outside the state, Hammond is a part of a string of hardworking, industrialized cities below Chicago called The Region. And like our more cosmopolitan neighbor, Hammond has a very striking skyline, but it's smokestacks, not office buildings. And beneath that skyline, our neighborhood was modest, but very proud. The, the Chapek household was certainly a loving home, but like most in the area, our living arrangements were quite humble, and there weren't always enough bedrooms, so for a period of time, I actually slept in the breakfast nook. My parents both had jobs, which was really unusual back in those days, and I was a latchkey kid before that term was even popular. And when it came to school, George Rogers Clark High School <laughs> wasn't exactly what you'd call college prep at the time. In fact, when I told my high school counselor I planned to go to college, she just stared at me dumbfounded and said, why would you go and do that? So needless to say, not everybody had my ambition for a life outside the region but in fact, most of my extended family have happily lived there entire lives, and I go back whenever I can, because it's home and I feel a connection. But I personally knew that I wanted something different, and I knew because there was one thing we did as a family every year that I knew something had to happen, and that thing was our annual visit to Walt Disney World. Driving through the gates, of the happiest place on earth was like nothing I've ever done before. There was no greater contrast to the region. It was sunny, warm, and impossibly green. The buildings were bright, the air smelled like popcorn, and watching over the entire thing was an immaculate castle, not a towering factory. And the people, the happy people in really cool outfits, said I was their guest. And it was certainly a long way from Hammond and everything I knew about the world. The Disney magic that I found in Orlando ignited my mind and ignited my spirit. Now, I did not set out to lead the company or even work for it. I just knew that there was a whole nother world out there and I wanted to leave my mark on it. So when my dad pointed the hood of our old Chevy down I-65 to drop me off in Bloomington, my mind was made up. IU is my ticket to a new life. 
but I was in for a rude awakening, that's for sure, because suddenly my academic preparedness, or lack thereof, was front and center. It seemed everybody I knew had taken something called an AP class, and I hadn't even heard of them. <laughs> Organic chemistry? Forget it. So I fought two battles at once, grinding away to pass my classes while also scrambling to backfill my gaps. And by the way, majoring in microbiology made it even worse. So despite graduating near the top of my high school class, I was still amongst the least prepared for the adventure that lies ahead. So I was kind of desperate, desperate to demonstrate my worthiness and desperate not to waste a dime of my parents' money on a school that was frankly testing my limits at the time. But that desperation turned to determination and my dream of defying expectations and the odds took over. And just like Iron Man draws his energy from that arc reactor, I get a thump from my drive to prove myself every single day. It's a lifetime power supply that pushes me through doubts, difficulties, and around those who keep underestimating kids from the region. Which brings me to the wisdom part. How did a proud region rat ever get to lead the most magical company on earth? Well, I've certainly been what many people would call lucky. But I don't believe in luck and I've never waited for it. Instead, I believe in willpower, optimism, and preparation. Fortunately, when it comes to preparation, your IU degrees validate that this institution has fully prepared you. You're as ready for the next chapter as any graduates in America. But now to stand up and excel, it's really up to you. You need to make sure you're prepared for each and every opportunity that comes your way. And to this day, I still heavily prepare for everything I do. And I make sure I've got answers, not just to the questions at hand, but to any questions that could come up about the answers to my original question. And that means I'm armed with an immense depth of insight whenever I walk into a meeting or any kind of negotiation. And developing that level of insight will set you apart in almost any setting. But frankly, preparation alone is not enough. And I know it's cliche, and maybe I've been pixie dusted many two times, but I absolutely believe that willpower can help you overcome incredible odds and achieve just about anything. I've certainly seen it in my life, the life of my family, and the lives of so many people that I've met around the world. You simply got to keep going and pushing. Don't get discouraged, cultivate patience, and no matter what the odds, be optimistic. And as I look towards your futures, I hope you too are optimistic. And I know that can be hard, especially given the state of our world and national discourse. Division is now the defining feature in our imperfect but extraordinary country. Social media gives everybody an outlet for expression. But somehow, adding voices has an expanded understanding. Rather, the national conversation has been twisted to further divide people, to send them to their separate corners, and to prevent us from finding common ground. Cynicism is driving disengagement and, most tragically, suppressing the most critical of human traits, empathy. Around the world, the situation is no more encouraging. But my ask of you is to look beyond the despair and apathy to be the generation that turns the tide. You can spark the regeneration of our civic culture. And if you think it's impossible, I promise you it can be done. In fact, the current state of our country feels an awful lot like the climate of my time here at IU. The Vietnam War and the culture wars of the 70s left deep divisions in American society and across our culture. But on March 30th, 1981, events shook us out of it. First, 
President Reagan was shot and gravely wounded. But then, on that same night, IU won our fourth national championship. <laughs> by, of course, knocking off North Carolina. <laughs> and somehow between our awakened patriotism and the pride that we have as being Hoosiers, a great wave of positivity surged through our campus. It was not, like nothing I've ever seen before. It swept away the residue of old arguments, and for a time, we became a much more unified student body. But we can't wait for some catalyst to shake us out of our national malaise. And after all, if a global pandemic didn't do it, I'm not sure what else will. Instead, we, you, must will us out of it by finding common ground with each other, your neighbors, coworkers, and peers on social media and in the real world. Treat them with respect. And if they don't reciprocate, smother them with kindness and empathy. And if you don't think taking the high road means letting go of your beliefs or principles, don't think that because you haven't let them go. You've just chosen to seek common ground above the fray. Maybe they'll understand you, maybe you'll understand them, maybe nobody's mind ever changes, but you'll come together in some way. You'll be forging new connections that can be built upon and built on and built on until finally once, he, once again, we are a whole society. Now, for many people, Disney represents some of that common ground that brings us all together, and it's one of the reasons I'm so proud to lead this fine company. We believe in acceptance, and we believe in a welcoming spirit. And when guests walk through our gates, the points of division just seem to evaporate away. In fact, the biggest disagreements our guests generally have is arguing whether splash, thunder, or space is the best mountain. <laughs> People feel the way they do about Disney because of the stories that we tell, stories that connect on a deep emotional level. And the fact that we can tell stories that resonate across political, geographic, economic, and seemingly every other division out there gives me hope about our dilemma. There's still more than that unites us than divides us. So go out and find those connection points and bring this world together. You know, there's an IU connection that runs through all of you. So go take this IU bond with you to your next chapter. Grab hold of that connective thread and start pulling this country back to a healthy civic climate. We need a brighter, more optimistic, more inclusive national story. Now, I'm not saying this is going to be easy. It'll take determination, perseverance, willpower, and maybe a little magic. <laughs> Class of 2022, I've been transcending low expectations for 40 odd years, but there's no doubt in my mind about the inherent potential in each one of you. After all, your IU grads go surprise the world. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chapik, for your inspiring and timely messages. And I have to confess, I have never um, corrected a commencement speaker before, but if I, with all due respect, made this first time, uh, I believe the happiest place on earth is Indiana University. <laughs> <laughs> I want to also make sure that we welcome the love of Bob's life. Cindy Chapek is also here today. His wife, who also is well-educated with an Indiana University degree. Can we please welcome Cindy as well? Now, a time-honored tradition of our commencement ceremonies is the induction of the graduating class into the Alumni Association of Indiana University. 
To induct our newest graduates, Trustee Buckner will represent the university. Deanna Crispin, past chair of the IU Alumni Association Board of Managers, will represent the alumni. And Madeline Diedrichs, vice president of IU Student Government, will represent the student body. Maddie is from Palos Park, Illinois, and is graduating today with a Bachelor of Science in Public Affairs from the O'Neill School of Public and Environmental Affairs. Now, will all members of the graduating class please stand as you are able. Trustee Buckner, inscribed upon this scroll are the names of every member of the graduating class of 2022. I request that each name be formally added to the list of alumni of Indiana Uni University. <laughs> We look forward to joining IU's extended family, and we ask the alumni to direct our service toward the university in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Diedrichs. Ms. Crispin, Ms. Crispin, the trustees of Indiana University are proud to present these graduates for admission into the IU Alumni Association. They join 750,000 living IU graduates who reside in all 50 states and more than 150 countries around the world, and they constitute the third largest alumni body in the United States. We know that those graduating here today will continue to enhance the worldwide reputation of Indiana University and bring distinction and honor to our alma mater. Thank you, Trustee Buckner. We accept and welcome you, the members of the graduating class of 2022, to the Indiana University alumni body. <laughs> class of 2022, we are confident that you will enrich our lives by your personal example and the high standards you will bring to all that you do. Indiana University depends on you to maintain our tradition of excellence. I challenge each of you to support your university and your alumni association with your time and talent. I specifically welcome Isabel Crane from Logansport and all of our Cass County alums into the alumni association. Thank you. To the class of 2022, I offer congratulations on your induction into the Indiana University Alumni Association. Please be seated. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our student speaker today. Jordan Ray Davis is graduating today with highest distinction with a Bachelor of Science degree, majoring in Marketing and International Business from the Kelly School of Business. Ms. Davis is from Dayton, Ohio, and she came to IU as a William R. Fry Scholar. She's a 2022 Martin Luther King Building Bridges Award winner and the 2021 Kelly Student Leader of the Year. She's also the recipient of the Herbin B. Wells Senior Recognition Award, the most prestigious award given to an IU Bloomington senior in recognition of academic excellence. Her campus involvement has included serving as Director of Health and Well-Being for IU Student Government and as Vice President of Outreach for Kelly Student Government. She has been a joy to come to know this year, and it is my great, great honor to welcome Jordan Davis to the podium. President Witten, Provost Srivastav, and the trustees of Indiana University. I'm so, so honored to be here, and I'm really, really excited. <laughs> Fellow students, thank you all so much for being here, and a huge congratulations to us, the class of 2022! I'm 
beyond excited and honored to celebrate with all of you today. There is a lot going on in our world right now, so just as we acknowledge all the pain we've collectively gone through, let's be proud that we're standing here today together. We should not take this special moment for granted. Let's play a little game. I want everyone to close their eyes right now. I'll do it too. Take a deep breath and time travel back to March 2020. <laughs> You're getting ready for spring break, mentally checking out of your midterms, although that might have been just me and doing your extremely last minute online shopping hauls, which I know was not just me. Then boom, we get the announcement. You know the one. Everything is flipped upside down. In your wildest dreams, did you ever imagine we would have entered a whole new world? Now let's come back to the present. I'm willing to bet that none of us imagined that, but guess what? This collective moment heightened our ability to imagine. And imagination does not only have to run in a negative direction. So much of what we've done for one another during this period proves that we can reimagine our world in a positive direction. A new way of life is on the horizon with an even bigger capacity to imagine and think beyond what previously seemed possible. Our imaginations are a very powerful tool. You see, I'm a huge dreamer. I'm always daydreaming, dreaming of the future I want, thinking about how we can reimagine our world. Maybe similar to some of you, I'm often told that I need to get my head out of the clouds. But looking back on our time here at IU, I think that an irrational imagination might be the key to how we take our Hoosier education and experiences and create a better world. Over the last four years, we've seen and experienced a beautiful reimagination of our beloved IU home. An unprecedented method of advanced research and discovery and the Big Red 200 supercomputer. Innovative ways to deliver academic instruction that created advanced strides in classroom accessibility for all students. Brilliant presidential leadership with IU's very own first incredible woman president in President Whitten. But as Hoosiers, we've also been very successful in reimagining how we live out our personal lives. Overcoming the fear of asking for help and saying, I'm not okay. Digging deeper into our friendships as we find new ways to stay connected. Reflecting on what it truly looks like to love our neighbor and support one another. Learning how to spend more time alone and being willing to give ourselves the grace we so freely give to others. Reimagination has enlivened our amazing sports programs, our world-renowned laboratories, and the celebration of music and sound in the IU Auditorium. But now for the big question, how do we take all that we've learned and all the things we've seen reimagined and keep this momentum going? I think the answer lies in us being courageous enough to let our imaginations run wild. Whether you're entering the workforce, obtaining a professional degree, taking some time for yourself, or completely unsure of what's next, we are all responsible for being irrationally imaginative. And this looks different for everyone. Maybe it looks like you rejecting the status quo and prioritizing your health and well being at all costs. Maybe it looks like focusing on the process rather than rushing towards the destination. Maybe it looks like speaking up even though your voice is shaking and your knees are trembling. All I know for sure is that this is certainly no easy task. It's going to be scary and it may feel strange at first, but we always fear what is not familiar. 
We've been so, so blessed to receive a world-class education through IU. So we now collectively owe it to ourselves, one another, and all the ones coming after us to reimagine and reinvent our collective world. So today, allow me to encourage you. Having your head in the clouds, being larger than life, and being irrational is not always a bad thing. In fact, I think we hold the key to completely transforming the world as we know it. All it takes is just a little imagination. Thank you, congratulations, and go Hoosiers! Thank you, Ms. Davis. Please accept our sincere best wishes to you in all of your endeavors. So, trustees, Provost Rostov, Mr. Chapek, faculty and staff, colleagues, family and friends, and members of this extraordinary class of 2022, all that today's graduates have achieved during their time at Indiana University reflects the diligent effort that's been invested to reach this very moment. The students who graduate this weekend as part of the IU Bloomington class of 2022 come from 97 different countries, from all 50 states in the District of Columbia, and from 88 of Indiana's 92 counties. You range in age from our youngest graduate at age 18 to this, week, this weekend's most mature graduate, who is 69. More than 28% of you are first-generation college students, and among this weekend's graduates are, and this means much to me because I am one as well, we have eight sets of twins as well. During your time at IU, you have excelled in the classroom. Among today's graduates are a Rhodes Scholar, a Goldwater Scholar, Boren Scholars, and 86 students who are graduating with a GPA of a 4.0. Many of you have helped to make IU a better place for your fellow students and for generations of students who will be following you through your service as student government leaders, peer tutors, sustainability fellows, and in so many other roles. Given that your time at IU coincided with a global pandemic, your graduate today, graduation today, of course, is a special triumph. You've attended classes, lectures, performances, and sporting events in a world where we only saw the top half of each other's faces. It's so great to see all of your faces today. But your grit and determination have brought you to this day. You've devoted long hours of diligent study during your time at IU. And so today you reap the rewards of your hard work. And going forward, you will carry with you a degree from the nation's leading public university. We're proud to celebrate your success. And the classmates and the friends who surround you today, of course, have become your IU family. And great opportunities and bright futures lay ahead for all of you. And as you begin the next stage of your journey through life, your connection to your IU family and to this place will always remain. No matter where you're from or where your careers take you, all of you will be IU Hoosiers for life. So among the more than 6,700 students who graduate today are countless, countless stories of individuals who have demonstrated resilience, compassion for others, and intense dedication to achieving goals. But I want to highlight just a few. Heidi Popson graduates today with a bachelor's degree in nursing. Helping to care for her autistic brother, Jeremy, taught Heidi the importance of compassion and patience when caring for others and inspired her to pursue a healthcare profession. She recently accepted a position as a pediatric oncology nurse. Brianna White, who is the first, Brianna, who is the first in her family to go to college, graduates with a degree in social work. She completed an internship in an Orange County, Indiana middle school that had previously never had a social work, and of course, she was so fantastic that she has been hired to stay on after graduation, and she's one of the many students who make a positive difference in the lives of people across Indiana. Jake Coetza graduates today with highest distinction with a degree in music composition from the Jacobs School of Music. Jake has been active during his time at IU as a songwriter, a music producer, a composer for film, a sound effects designer, a DJ, a performer on the piano, guitar and trombone, and of course a member of the stage crew at the Jacobs School. 
Aisha Young graduates with high distinction with a degree in informatics from the Letty School. She has worked in the school's Serve IT nonprofit clinic, and she has used her experience as a black woman in tech to mentor and encourage other students of color. As part of the school's inaugural class on Disney theme parks and technology, <laughs> she also traveled to Disney World to learn about how tech is used to bring attractions to life and to mold the experience of patrons. Laura Wilkins graduates today with highest distinction with degrees in psychology and animal behavior from the College of Arts and Sciences. She has thrived at IU as a Wells Scholar, as a productive member of two research lab, and as a four-year member of the Red Stepper Dance Team. Her honors thesis recently won a departmental award and is being submitted for publication in a leading journal. And among today's graduates are a number of IU student athletes whose hard work and determination has led to remarkable achievements in competition as well as the classroom. Andrew Capobianco, for example, is graduating with a degree in exercise science from the School of Public Health. A member of the men's swimming and diving team, Andrew is an Olympic silver medalist, a seven-time All-American, a two-time Big Ten Diver of the Year, the winner of multiple Big Ten and NCAA championships, and he has served as a peer mentor to other student athletes. Andrew and the other IU student athletes among the class of 2022 are proof that at IU, our student athletes are students first, that they excel in the classroom, and they graduate. And so let me just stress, um, that I have given some, some important examples, but every single one of you are so important to this institution. And I am so glad that you're getting a degree and that you're going out in the world, but I am gonna miss all of you more than I can say. From those with the great hands that caught hot dogs at the football games, um, to those that I've stood in line with, incredibly long lines at the Starbucks, at the IMU, uh, to those who have walked across campus with me um, and, and kindly so many told me so many things, including the best vantage point to watch Little Five as well. You are simply extraordinary, and I'm very hopeful that you will all come home often as well. So members of the class of 2022, all of us at IU are proud of what you've accomplished at IU, and we will be equally proud as you make your mark on the world in the coming years. Indiana University has given you the tools and the opportunities to develop into such leaders. So graduates, in the years to come, may you apply the skills and knowledge you have gained at IU to build rewarding and fulfilling lives. Strive to continue to learn in new ways. May you continue to take care of one another and develop and exercise your commitment to the service of others as well. And may you seek and find new ways to turn the knowledge you have gained here into action and to turn action into change that will improve our world in countless ways. Congratulations, 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 and heartfelt best wishes to the class of 2022. It is now my great pleasure to invite to the, to the podium our brand new and exceptional new provost, Rahul Shabobstev, who um, also serves as the Executive Vice President of Indiana University so that we can get this show on the road and get you guys college degrees. Rahul? Thank you, President Witten. Good morning, everyone. We now come to the central moment of the ceremony. Here, in the presence of the trustees, faculty, family, and friends, the candidates will be presented for the conferral of their degrees. The names of the candidates are listed school by school in the program booklets. I invite your attention to the fact that some candidates have been awarded honors in general scholarship. Those students are wearing cream and crimson cords of distinction on their shoulders, and their honors are noted in your program booklets. In addition, some students have been members of the Hutton Honors College, and they have earned with their degrees the general honors notation. This notation signifies successful completion of a particularly challenging general education curriculum. In addition, some of our graduates are wearing cords that indicate their attainment of departmental or school honors or membership in honor societies. Finally, 40 of today's graduates are the recipients of IU's Outstanding Senior Awards. Their honors are also listed in your program booklets. Indiana University holds all of its graduates in high esteem, 
and takes an added measure of pride in those who have excelled academically. Therefore, I ask those of you who are graduating with distinction, high distinction, and highest distinction to please stand and remain standing. I also, I also ask the candidates who are graduating with the general honors notation to please stand and remain standing. Students, students who have attained departmental or school, or school honors or membership in honor societies, please stand and remain standing. And finally, our outstanding senior award recipients, please stand. Congratulations to all of you. Audience, please, another round of applause for these talented students. Please be seated. I also want to take a moment to recognize our graduating students who are veterans or who are currently serving in the U.S. Armed Forces. Will you please stand as well? Please. Please accept our deepest thanks and congratulations. Please be seated. The deans of all the schools will now present candidates for their degrees. President Witten will confer, formally confer degrees after all the school candidates have been introduced. Let me start first by inviting Rick Van Kooten, Executive Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences and the home of our very own Dr. Bob Chapek. How does that sound, Bob? Uh, to come forward and present candidates for degrees. For all the candidates, all the candidates for the degree, I'll start over. Will all the candidates for the degree, Bachelor of Arts in the College of Arts and Sciences areas, please stand and remain standing. Candidates for the degree Bachelor of Fine Arts in College of Arts and Sciences areas, please stand and remain standing. Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Liberal Studies please stand and remain standing? Will the candidates for all Bachelor of Science degrees for, in the College of Arts and Sciences please stand? <laughs> These candidates meeting all requirements for the degrees indicated are recommended by the faculty for the conferral of these degrees. Congratulations, collegians. Thank you, Rick. Please be seated. I now ask Peg Feynman, founding dean of our exemplary Eskenazi School of Art, Architecture, and Design in the College of Arts and Sciences to present candidates for degrees. Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts in the Eskenazi School of Art, Architecture, and Design please stand and remain standing? Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts in the Eskenazi School of Art, Architecture, and Design, please stand and remain standing. And will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science in the Eskenazi School please stand? These candidates meeting all requirements for the degrees indicated are recommended by the faculty for the conferral of their degrees. Congratulations. Seated. 
Thank you, Peg. Let me now invite Nick Collither, Interim Dean of our world-famous Hamilton Luger School of Global and International Studies in the College of Arts and Sciences to present candidates for degrees. Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts from the Hamilton Luger School of Global and International Studies please stand and remain standing? Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science from the Hamilton Luger School of Global and International Studies please stand? These candidates meeting all requirements for the degrees indicated are recommended by the faculty for the conferral of these degrees. Congratulations. Please be seated. Thank you. Uh, this is another one for your special attention, Bob. Um, let me now invite Walter Gens, Interim Dean for the Magnificent Media School in the College of Arts and Sciences to present candidates for degrees. Thank you. Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts in the Media School, areas please stand and remain standing. Get up there, everyone. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts in Journalism please stand and remain standing? And will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science in the Media School areas please stand? These candidates meeting all requirements for the degrees indicated are recommended by the faculty for the conferral of these degrees. Congratulations. Please be seated. Thank you, Walter. Let's turn it up a little bit for our incredible Kelly School of Business. Let me invite Dean Idaline Kessner our, uh, for the Indiana University Kelly School of Business. Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science in Business please stand? Candidates meeting all requirements for the degrees indicated are recommended by the faculty for the conferral of this degree. Congratulations, Kellys. Please be seated. Thank you, Idaline. I now invite Anastasia Moroni, Dean of our most exceptional School of Education, to come forward to present candidates for degrees. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Education please stand? <laughs> These candidates meeting all requirements for the degree indicated are recommended by the faculty for the conferral of this degree. Congratulations. Please be seated. Thank you. Uh, let me now invite Dennis Groth, Dean of our groundbreaking Luddy School of Informatics, Computing and Engineering to come forward and present candidates for degrees. Will the candidates for all Bachelor of Science degrees in the Luddy School of Informatics, Computing and Engineering please stand? These candidates, meeting all requirements for the degrees indicated, are recommended by the faculty for the conferral of these degrees. Congratulations. Please be seated. Thank you, Dennis. Watch your vocal folds as you chair the next one. Uh, this is the Jacobs School of Music. Let me... Let me invite Jeremy Allen, the interim David Henry Jacobs, Bicentennial Dean of our fantastic Jacobs School of Music. 
Will the candidates for Associate of Science degrees in the Jacobs School of Music please stand and remain standing? Will the candidates for Bachelor of Music and Bachelor of Music Education degrees please stand and remain standing? Will the candidates for Bachelor of Science degrees in the Jacobs School of Music please stand? These candidates meeting all requirements for the degrees indicated are recommended by the faculty for the conferral of these degrees. Congratulations. Please be seated. Thank you. Let me now invite Robin Newhouse, Dean of our wonderful School of Nursing to present candidates for their degrees. Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science in Nursing please stand? These candidates, meeting all requirements for the degree, are recommended by the faculty for conferral of this degree. Congratulations. Thank you. Please be seated. Everybody knows we have the number one ranked School of Public and Environmental Affairs. Let me invite Dean Sean Mooney. Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts in the O'Neill School of Public and Environmental Affairs please stand and remain standing? <laughs> Will the candidates for all Bachelor of Science degrees in the O'Neill School of Public and Environmental Affairs please stand? These candidates meeting all requirements for the degrees indicated are recommended by the faculty for the conferral of these degrees. Congratulations and keep leading for the greater good. Please be seated. Thank you. If you've heard of something called the pandemic, you know just how important public health is. So I let me invite Dean David B. Allison. Will the candidates for all Bachelor of Science degrees from the School of Public Health please stand? These candidates, meeting all requirements for the degrees indicated, are recommended by the faculty for the conferral of these degrees. Congratulations. Please be seated. Thank you. Uh, finally, I call on Tamara Davis, Dean of our stupendous School of Social Work. Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science in Labor Studies please stand and remain standing? Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Social Work please stand? These candidates meeting all requirements for the degrees indicated are recommended by the faculty for the conferral of these degrees. Congratulations, social workers. Please be seated. President Witten, the exceptional class of 2022. Okay, I have to say the magic words to make this official, so will all the candidates for degrees please stand once again.
candidates. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Indiana University, I am so proud to confer upon each of you the degrees recommended by the faculty with all attendant rights and responsibilities. Congratulations, college graduates. to show that you are truly graduates of Indiana University by moving the tassels on your caps to the left side. <laughs> Congratulations to each and every one of you. Please be seated. And so we, so we come to the close of this milestone, milestone occasion in your lives. We are grateful to Mr. Edelstein for leading us in song, to Professor Rodney Dorsey, conductor of the Indiana University Commencement Band, and to all of today's amazing musicians. Thank you so much. Musicians, would you please stand so we can express our appreciation? Thank you. Our thanks go as well, of course, to our sign language interpreters, Kathleen Bennett and Nancy Hopper. And finally, I would like to thank everyone who worked behind the scenes to plan today's ceremony. Please join me in thanking them as well. Now, to acknowledge our newest graduates, I ask Mr. Edelstein to lead us all in singing our alma mater, Hail to Old IU. The words on the inside front covers of your program booklets for anyone that might not have memorized them yet. After the alma mater, please be seated and remain seated until the platform party and faculty have left the commencement area. Now, will all who are able, please stand and join us in singing of our beautiful alma mater. Congratulations, class of 2022. Thank you. 